Hey guys and welcome to this episode of Quite Frankly. And this time I have a tip about going black and white. Now there are many converters out there that go black and white. The ones I really like are Alien Skin Exposure and of course DxO Film Pack and of course Nick Silver FX. But there's a new one out there and it's I think pretty awesome. And it's from the guys from MacFun and it's called Tonality Pro. Now as you can see here I have a color image and it's a little bit of a drama image. I always love my images to have a certain of storytelling. In this case you can see the pose of the model, it's all drama, she's very very sad. The background is very moody. But when you look at the picture like this, it's well, it isn't that sad, it isn't that moody. Now black and white works really well to get some really intensity going there. So let's go into MacFun and let's look at tonality. Okay, so here we see the interface of Tonality. And as with all the Mac fun uh, software, you can have a lot of stuff to play with. The first thing, of course, you have your presets. Now, presets are cool, but presets are often, for me, a starting point. I love to create my own looks and my own presets. And, of course, you can do this. So, I already created some user presets. And let's just go to a standard preset. Uh, for example, Darken and Structure. As you can see, there's a huge impact on the image. And some funky black and white with color. Or a vintage portrait. But how do you create something like this? Now, so let's start from the beginning. I have now everything leveled. So now I have my standard. By the way, if you press on the eye, you can see a before and after. Or of course, you can compare the two images next to each other. But I always like to go for the eye. Now the first thing that I love to do is add some contrast. And contrast you can find here. Now of course they have a normal contrast setting, but they also have a smart contrast. Which actually is pretty cool. It already gives the image a little bit more pop, as you can see in the clouds. Very nice. You can play a little bit with the blacks. I like the blacks to be really dark. And of course you can play with the whites. Now one thing that I really like is also play with clarity. Especially for stuff like the sky and the background. And the nice thing about uh, tonality is that you also have the structure setting. Now structure is a little bit different than tonality, ex uh, sorry, than clarity. It gives you way better control about small details. And of course you can also use the protection to protect certain areas of the image. It's like a threshold setting. And the microstructure. So here we go. I really like this effect. Boost it just a little bit more. There we go. And maybe clarity we can back off now a little bit. Okay, there we go. Of course you can choose your color filters. I always like to play with these and to see what effect they give. Often the red ones are very nice for skin. The white one is more the standard one. And in this case I think we're going to go for this one. Or no, the green one. That's nice. Of course you can play around with it in your saturation and luminance channels. So for example if you want a little bit more detail on the red. You can change the tonality of the grass. Let's make it a little bit darker. The dress stand out a little bit more, especially these areas in the dress. There you go, give her a little bit of accent light this way. You're of course not creating something with light, but you're playing with your colors. And you can even bring color back as you can see here. And this is way too... Uh, how do you call it? Cliché, of course, but if you are into that kind of stuff, you can bring colors back. It's almost selective coloring, but better. No, <laughs> we just keep it real black and white. Okay, let's go further down. Of course, you can use a tone curve. 
There we go. Give it a little bit of contrast boost. That's nice. Oh. And of course you can use split toning. I have to be honest with you, that this is the kind of stuff that I normally only play with if I really want to go funky. And in this case I just want to keep it standard. You can uh, disable it and of course reset it with these two settings. Okay. We can give it a little bit of a glow that's really nice for glamour shots. But in this case we don't need glow. Maybe just a little bit. There we go. Now an interesting one for me is always lens blur. Now what is lens blur? Lens blur actually gives you the option to really draw the attention of the viewer towards your subject. Of course you can do this with vignetting, which is over here. But I like to do it with lens blurs. Now you could say you emulate uh, the lens baby effect or tilt and shift lens. But in this case it's a little bit more subtle. You place your center in here and you just add the amount of lens blur. And with the radius you actually control where you want it and the transition if you want it hard or soft. Let's say I want it really extreme for this shot. Now I always start out with 100. Now some people say, Frank, why do you start out with 100? If you start out with 100 you can actually back it off and you can see exactly what you're doing. But I want it really extreme. There we go. And of course you can place the center somewhere else. I like it here. You could use a texture overlay in this case. Well, I don't want a texture overlay in this image. And of course you can do vignetting. There we go. You can change the size of the vignetting. And also here you can place the center. Be very careful where you place the center, because if you place it on her face, it isn't the effect that you want. So you place it somewhere where it's very good. And there we go. Maybe a little bit lower to darken the sky. Really nice. And of course grain. Now some people say you want your images as noiseless as possible, right? Well, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I love a little bit of film grain. But one of the things that's very important, make sure that you go into 100% and move around to make sure that you got the film grain right. So here we go. And don't overdo it, just place it here. The nice thing is you can also play with your softness of your grain. I like it more rough. There we go. And you can play with the contrast inside your grain, which is really cool. Because now you can really make it stand out. There we go. And do fit. And we have a before and after. As you can see, I really draw my attention towards the model. Of course, the, the focus blur is incredibly surreal, but somehow I do like it in this case. And finally you can choose some photo frames, uh, which I don't like. And of course, as MacFun always has, you can change the opacity. So there we go. We just press apply. And it now processes the images. Now, I really like Tonality Pro. I've been working with it for a few weeks now. And it's really a very versatile tool. So check them out at their website, MacFun, which you can now see on the bottom of this frame. And check out Tonality Pro. I think you're going to really like it. And here we have the final image.